In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to each other. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on our peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command, and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, Mosach, Tubal, and Jabin, to the distant coastlands that I have never heard of my fame or seen my glory. And they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries, to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord. Just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels, some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus passed through the towns and villages, teaching as he went, making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but it will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you're from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you're from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there'll be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and west, and from the north and south, and will recline at table into the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus is asked in the Gospel a question. Lord, will only a few people be saved? The person asking that was probably trying to figure out, depending on the numbers that Jesus would give, whether they would be part of that, whether they would be one of the ones saved. If the Lord had answered that question, well, 90% will be saved, that person might look around at the crowd and others and say, I'll definitely make it. But if the Lord said 50% will be saved, they might look around again and try to figure out, well, I have to be better than half these people and again might feel satisfied that they would make it. And if the Lord gave a very low number, they might be frightened, frightened and scared that they would not make the cut, that they would not end up in heaven. 
And Jesus didn't actually answer the question. Instead, he told the person asking the question, and each and every one of us, that we must strive to enter through that narrow gate to do all that God commands of us. And we must keep our faith in him, our belief that he did die for us, go to the cross, washes away our sins with his precious blood. But then also he says to us, and that's our ticket into heaven, welcome not because of any action on our part, but because of what Jesus did for each and every one of us. But the reality is, Jesus said, but if you love me, follow my commandments. And he went on to say further in the gospel, there were those who walked with him for a while, those who ate with him, and then decided to turn their back on Jesus and all the things that he was calling them to do. And in the end, he will say, depart from me, you evildoers. Leave because you never really believed in me. You never really loved me. And so we hear this being proclaimed to the Jewish people of Jesus' time. They were being told that not only will, would some people of the Jewish faith in the end be turned away, but others from the east and the west and the north and the south that were not part of the house of Israel that they would be welcomed into heaven and that they would be with their God in the kingdom of God. And so we pray that we will have the strength after we profess our faith, our belief in Jesus Christ, that we will be able to follow Jesus and do what he's asking of us. Now it tells us in the reading that St. Paul, um, you know, his writings to the Hebrews that we read, it tells us that sometimes our Father in heaven will discipline us, allow things to happen, his permissive will, that things might happen in our lives that are not very pleasant, things that might disturb us or set us back or cause us to think, or maybe actually cause us some pain and suffering. And yet, our Father in heaven allows that so that we may be awakened sometimes from our sleep or, or awakened and saying, hey, I really need to be in touch with God. I really need to stay close to my Savior. And in those times of need, in those times of pain and suffering, if we really think about it, those are the times we pray the most. Those are the times that we're constantly in communication with God. Those are the times we were seeking his, his blessing, his favor, over and over and over again. And those are the times that will develop us as a, as a believer, as a believer in Jesus Christ, and one who would trust their God in all things. The sad part is, is that there are people who will not enter heaven. And of course, we pray very much for their souls. We pray that they will, before it is their time to go home, that they will acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that they will welcome him into their hearts, that they will be covered with his holy blood, and that they would receive the power of the sacraments and in Eucharist and reconciliation, and they would understand that it is Jesus Christ our Savior who brings them salvation. When I was young in college and I had a lot of things that had been going wrong, I, I had uh, an operation on my knee in, in um, high school and then in college I get to, to Northeast and the very first day I'm registering for class and before I even get there, I break down on my little Volkswagen Beetle and I'm sitting in front of the gas tanks on Route 3 and a car plowed into me at 65 miles an hour and wrecked my knee all over again. And I can remember sitting there at Boston City Hospital saying to God, why? Why am I starting again? I had made such gains. Why is this happening? And I know it's not God's will for me or any of us to be in pain, 
but his permissive will does allow things to happen in our lives. And I remember thinking during that time, like, God, do you truly love me? Do you experience my love back and do you receive my love back? And it's times like that when we're called to, to take a look at our lives and, and, and to think about maybe there are things that we should change and maybe there are things that um, we need to do uh, by way of practicing our faith. I know for me at many times, many different points in my life, that when I've faced difficulty, that in those difficult moments, the strength, the very strength of my soul, my heart grew because it, it pointed to the fact that I depend on a loving God, a God who is all-powerful and who one day will welcome me to heaven. At the end of this past year, I was, I was giving my finals to my juniors in high school, 16, 17-year-olds, and they listened to me for the past year telling them about how to live a moral life and how to be faithful to God and to have a relationship with God. And at the end, I said, the last question, I said, do you expect to go to heaven? And the interesting part is every single one of them said yes. And I said, well, that's a good thing. That's a good thing that you expect to go to heaven. But then what must you do on your part? Sure, salvation is a free gift from Jesus. But then what is he is asking of each and every one of us? And I said to those kids, then you must listen to the voice of Jesus in the depths of your heart. You must continue to follow him and be strengthened by the sacraments he offers. And God will lead you and welcome you into heaven. And it's up to us to place our trust in him. Jesus did not want to answer that person in that village giving any kind of statistics or numbers because he knows our human weakness. If, that, if he gave a number that was too high, we would probably stop. We would probably say, I'm all set. I'll be there. But what Jesus says to us, do not be like the evildoers. Keep your heart with my heart. Follow all that I'm asking you to do. Put your trust in me, and I will welcome you one day into my kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, trusting in God's goodness and love, we turn to him with confidence, bringing forward our needs and petitions. Let us pray for deacons, priests, and bishops of our archdiocese that they may strive to imitate Christ in their ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for unity amongst the nations of the world 
that they may strive to live in peace and harmony unto God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our children in the collaborative who will be returning to school soon, that God may bless them with a safe and prosperous year. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for ourselves, that we may not be intimidated by the narrow gate of heaven, but strive to enter through by serving God and neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our recently departed, including Elizabeth Salmonte, Michael Howley, and Donald Cano, that they may experience the beatific vision of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for John B. and Mildred Kelly and family for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for hearing us and for all the ways in which you bless us today and every day. And we ask you to open our hearts ever more fully to your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gift of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so, in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as they acclaim.
We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You have found man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him from the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, the prisoner's freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruit for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await the, his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, 
that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.